Hi, welcome to your video. Um, we are going to be dealing with word problems and marking the text. Um, by the end, you will be able to mark up the text and use that to solve word problems. So let's get started. All right, first, before we do anything, we need to talk about what the steps are to marking the text and what that actually means. So I'm going to walk with through you or walk with you through my expectations. So here we go. First step, you are going to read the entire problem. And yes, I mean the entire problem. It's your first time reading it. Um, and you are going to put a box around the question. And then you're going to put a variable next to the box. Um, typically, we would write x, but it's any variable of your choice, you can make it applicable to the problem itself as well. It doesn't matter. Step number two. You're going to read the entire problem for the second time and underline all important information. Um, in other words, numbers and their labels, um, anything of important, valuable information. Step number three, you're going to read the entire problem again for a third time and circle all the operational words and then you're going to write that operational sign next to the circled word. So example, if you're multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, you will include those symbols next to the words. And last but not least, step number four, you are going to write an expression, equation, or inequality based on the problem and the information that you've been given. So now that you know what these four steps are, we are going to use them to solve word problems, and I'm going to walk through two of them with you. Okay, I'm going to do some examples with you, um, two to be exact. So. I will walk you through what the expectations are. Here we go. Uh, step number one was to read and box the question and then put a variable with it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Devra is making calzones to sell at her restaurant. She starts with five cans of tomato sauce and then uses a third of the cans for the first batch of calzones. How many cans of tomato sauce does Devra use for the first batch of calzones? Um, there's the question right there, so I'm going to box that. And I'm going to put a variable with that. I'm going to pick the letter C because we're talking about how many cans. Step number two, you're going to read and then underline the important information, um, which is basically your numbers and the labels that go with them. So as I'm reading, I'm going to look and underline for that important information. Deborah is making calzones to sell at her restaurant. She starts with five cans, I'm going to underline that, of tomato sauce and then uses one third of the cans for the first batch of calzones. How many cans of tomato sauce does Deborah use for the first batch of calzones? All right. Then, uh, step number three, you're going to read again for a third time um, and circle operations and put a sign with them. Um, so, Deborah is making calzones to sell at her restaurant. She starts with five cans of tomato sauce and then uses a third of the cans for... Oh, and a circle of two of the, the cans for the first batch of calzones. How many cans of tomato sauce does Devra use for the first batch of calzones? Um, so now, step number four, I'm going to take all the things that I've underlined and circled and boxed, and I'm going to write an expression, equation, or inequality that will help me solve this problem. Um, she uses one-third of the cans, um, and I know that of... Oh, and I even forgot this step, so make sure you put this in here. You have to include the sign of. I know that of means multiplication. 
So I'm going to put a multiplication sign there. Um, you can even squeeze it in closer than that. I can't really. You can do a better job of that. Um, and then we're going to write an expression. So she starts with five cans. And then she uses one third of, of means multiplying. And I'm going to multiply one third. And I know when I'm multiplying, this is going to give me how many cans she used. So there, I'll erase that first. Um, so here is my equation. Um, and then I'm going to solve it. So five times one third is five over one. So five times one is five, and one times three is three, so five thirds is how many cans, um, which is, if we turn it into a mixed in number, that would be one and two thirds. So Deborah used one and two thirds cans in the first batch. Second example. Step number one, read and box the question and put an X for the variable, or put a variable in the question, I should say. Uh, we are making, you are making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in Rogers. You plan to use half of a sheet of construction paper for each ad. You need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. You have 18 sheets of construction paper. How many ads can you make? Well, there's my question. I'm boxing it, and we're talking about how many ads. So I'm going to pick the letter A um, to represent what we're solving for. Step number two, read and underline the important information, including labels. So here we go. You are making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in Rogers. No important information there. Um, you plan to use half a sheet of construction paper for each ad. There is an important word here. Um, it is half. It, that's a number. It's just in word form. Um, and the label is a sheet of construction paper. Um, so half of the construction paper sheet. Um, you need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. That's important as well. Five sheets. Um, and that's for that title banner. Uh, and then you have 18 sheets of construction paper, 18 sheets. Um, I'm going to also underline title banner to go with that five sheets. Um, and then how many ads can you make? All right, step number three, read and circle your operations and put a sign with them. So here we go. You are making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in Rogers. You plan to use half a sheet of construction paper for each ad. Um, then I would consider half also an operation. Um, you can either think of it as two ways. You can think it, of it as multiplying or dividing by two. So multiplying by one half or dividing by two. Either way, just depends on how you see it. Um, and then you need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. You have 18 sheets of construction paper. Um, so that's the only operation that we have there. Um, and so we are going to use that to create an equation. Um, so we have half the sheets of construction paper. So I'm going to say one half. Um, and that's for each ad, so that's going to be one half of A. You could say A divided by 2. That would be also a choice for that one. Um, it's just personal preference. Um, then you need five sheets of construction paper for the title banner. So you need to include five more sheets. And then you have 18 sheets of paper. That's your total. Okay, That's your solution side total. Um, so now that I have this, I can answer the question as to how many ads can I make. I'm solving for my letter A. Um, so here we go. Subtract 5 on both sides. 1 half A equals 13. Multiply by 2 on both sides. And A equals 26. So 26 ads can be made. Um, it is very, very, very important that you are, in fact, reading it three times. 
Um, it is a good critical reading skill. Um, it's what my expectations are for you. Uh, so you are reading the whole thing three times and you're doing one step at a time. Um, do not shortcut this. This is the end. It is the end of your video and you will no longer hear me reading the same paragraph over three times in a row. Um, now it's your job to do that and that's the expectation. So thanks for watching. I look forward to working on this more with you in class. Have a great day.